Hello and welcome to all of you TLB TV viewers. I'm your host, Lorena Hoops, and you have joined us for another episode of Write the World. It's the show where we talk to all sorts of different authors and writers, and we bring you lots of great books that you need to check out. And today I have a very special guest who writes in the Christian field just like I do, so I'm super excited to introduce you guys to Danica Favorite. How are you doing tonight, Danica? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing very well. It was a good day. Lots of uh, rest and relaxation and uh, pounding on the bags of the gym, so I'm feeling super pumped. Yeah. Nice. All right, so you have written quite a lot of books from what you told me before we got, um, before we got live here. And so let's right. start at the very beginning. What was your first book that you wrote? My first book was called Rocky Mountain Dreams from Love and Spread Historical. And it is set in the silver mine boom of Colorado in the 1880s in Leadville, Colorado. Nice. So this is one of the historical romances, correct? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. And then you have several that you've done with this publisher. Are they a series? Do they follow or build on one another? They are. They're um, set, like I said, they're set in Leadville during the 1880s, during the mining boom. Uh, they stand alone, but they all kind of weave around the same community. And so um, there's eight books in total. Six are out. And then I have two more coming, one in October 2017, and then the next one will be in March of 2018, or February, sorry. One of those two. I think it's February. Okay. Very cool. And do you have any of the covers hanging around with you for this series? Um, for the two new ones, I don't, but let me, I should have thought to do this before. I've got the shelf of Danica right here. Yay. I love and the shelf of Danica. <laughs> the shelf of Danica. Yes. All my books are all, uh-oh. As I have one? I have the box of Lorena because I have three small kids, and if I put them on bookshelves, they like to pull them off, and I'm like, don't touch them. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yes. So this is my first book, Rocky Mountain Dreams. Very cool. And, um, then my second book is The Lawman's Redemption. Nice. Very nice, handsome hero there. Yes. Told this is Will him. Lawson, and he is a lawman, um, obviously. And he finds redemption in this book. And he's kind of fun because he does pop up in other books as the lawman they all turn to. So awesome. I like um, that. And this one is Shotgun Marriage. Very nice. And then we have, oh yeah, it is in the right order. And that is The Nanny's Little Matchmakers. Oh, <laughs> very cute. So this is my fun. I love this cover because I was very specific. I said, I want my hero to look like Ricky, Ricky Schroeder. Really and does. if you look at him, he looks like Ricky Schroeder. <laughs> so they did it. And then um, the little African-American girl on the cover was also very important to the story. And I said, please put an African-American girl on the cover. And they did. So kudos to them, really, because I, I could not be more pleased. That is amazing. Um, and it's yeah. really kind of hard to find. Um, my second book has uh, follows an African-American woman. And I had the hardest time finding a nice picture of an African-American woman that I wanted to be on this cover. It's not super easy and I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't either because I just think, and it's so funny, this little girl is so adorable because she's actually, she kind of reminds me of my niece when she was younger. And just, I was like, yay, that's so perfect. And I don't really know why, because you know, you see like pictures not necessarily cover pictures, um, but just pictures of African Americans, and you're like, wow, that person's good looking. You know, put them on a cover, and they're not, and I wish they would be. Yeah, it's so true. They have the best skin. Yeah, so pretty. Um, and then this one is For the Sake of the Children. Oh, very cute. And then this last one, this is my most recent one. This one came out in May, and this is called An Unlikely Mother. I like it. And I really, really love this one a lot because um, it really is, if you want a picture of what Leadville in the mining area looks like, this would be it right here. 
So they, they just, they really got it right. The other one they did really well in terms of capturing Leadville was my first book. In fact, for a while, this picture of Rocky Mountain Dreams, I was sure that they had just used a picture I had taken because that background looks almost exactly like a shot that I took when I was on vacation there. So oh, that's amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. And so, so these are the six that are out. And like I said, there are two more coming. So what is the book in October? Do we have a title yet for that one? Yes. It's called Mistletoe Mommy. Oh, that's so cool. It is available for pre-order on Amazon. And um, again, it's just a really delightful cover. Um, really excited about that one too, because it's just super cute. It, obviously it's a Christmas book. Right. And um, and it was cool because that book, most authors talk about how they write their Christmas books in the summer. And this one I actually got to write over Christmas. And so I was reading it. It was Christmas. I knew it was going to be called Mistletoe Mommy. And I was really excited because I got to weave in this mistletoe theme. Oh, that's very and cool. So I was really happy about that. Um, I, I've been really just very pleased with how things have worked out. It's and then that you said that most, um, most authors write their Christmas books in the summer. Cause I just, I just finished a book that was going to be set around Christmas and mm -hmm. it's the summer. And I was like, hmm. I know, I know. I actually have two Christmas books I have to write, um, here coming up pretty soon. And I'm like, wow. All right. I need to get in the mood for Christmas now. <laughs> Hallmark is doing a special Christmas in July. So I like, I like TiVo all the Christmas uh, movies. And oh, I'm that's funny. Well, what's funny is I live in Colorado in the mountains and where we live, I can't get cable or television signal. Oh. So everything I watch is online and I can't get the Hallmark channel online. Oh, so yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, if it's not on Netflix or Amazon prime, I can't watch it. So <laughs> Oh. Or unless it's one of like some of the uh, like NBC and CBS and them, right. they will have the show where you can watch for a couple weeks, like the most recent episodes for free. Right. Yes. But otherwise, that's how that's the only way I get TV unless I go somewhere else. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but you probably get a lot of snow at Christmas, don't you? Well, it's really weird because we had a very dry winter. Yeah. And so we didn't have a lot of snow at Christmas. We had a little bit and it was just enough. Um, I'm trying to think. It wasn't Christmas Day. I think it was the day after Christmas maybe. And, but it was just enough to make everything messy. Oh. So we didn't, but then in the spring we got hammered and, you know, we'd get two feet of snow and, couple days later it melt away and then we get two more feet of snow and then it melt away and so I think people think it's winter here year round and again we just had a super snowy spring but through the fall and through the winter we had very little moisture we were kind of worried about that so yeah I don't get a lot of snow where I'm at here in fact I grew up in Texas and you wouldn't expect it to snow much in Texas but mm -hmm. it has snowed more in Texas where I was from than it ever has here in Washington. And so I'm like, I kind of miss the snow, at least, you know, a good one uh -huh. a season for the kids to play in. I think we had one and it was pretty light snow, but. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back to your book. So you told me that you started writing about 15 years ago, correct? Yes. Yes. But, but your books were just published about two years ago. Yeah. I got my first contract. Um, three or four years ago. And my first book was out in 2014. So about two and a half years ago. Okay. So was there a reason that it took that long or? Um, I think in the beginning, um, I was really just figuring out what I wanted to do and what I wanted to write. Yeah. And for a long time, I really didn't want to write a Christian romance. I was like, no, I don't want to write the, and, but I didn't want to write sex either. Right. Yes. And so finally, one of my friends who's published with Love Inspired just said to me, when are you just going to write Christian romance? And I was like, uh, and I was like, because, and 
I started explaining to her my reasons and, you know, because I really, I like to deal with more complex faith struggles, I think, and more complex struggles that people deal with. Right. And so I really didn't want to have to, I wasn't real sure how I was going to integrate that into my writing in a way that would work for the Christian market. And be meaningful. And so finally it was just like, okay, fine, I'll write a Christian romance. <laughs> and, um, and it took a while for me. And so I started writing some contemporaries and they just weren't landing real well with the editors. And I remember probably about a year and a half or so before I sold my first book, I'm sitting with the editor and I just said, you know, could you just tell me what it is? Yeah. I will, I'll just fix it. I'll do it. And she just looked at me. She says, you know, I don't know. I love your voice. I love your writing. I love all of these things. She had so many great things to say about my writing. And she's like, but there's something missing and I don't know what it is. And so I was really frustrated at that point. And I remember my agent sat me down and he said, you're not allowed to quit. <laughs> Good agent. And he's like, and you're not allowed to fire me. <laughs> you have to keep pushing until you sell your first book and then you can do whatever you want but I believe in you and I know you can do it and so I did um and we had this conversation we were in the parking garage of a hotel walking from the hotel to a restaurant to have dinner right from a conference and he looks at me he says you love history you have a degree in history, you read historicals, why aren't you writing a Christian historical? And very honestly, what I told him was that for me, that's my candy. That's my fun. Right. And I never wanted that to turn into work. And so I said, I'm just not going to. <laughs> never think And that. so finally, <laughs> he, he kind of dared me. And I said, okay, so here's, here's how this is going to work. I'm going to write a historical. I'm going to submit it. At the end of this little experiment, one of us is going to say, I told you so. <laughs> and if it is me, we will never speak of writing historicals ever, ever again. He said, all right. And that was the first book I sold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, I guess he told me eight books yeah. later. <laughs> And it's been fun, though, right? I mean, even it though I has mean, been fun. Want to make um, and I purposely chose Leadville because it's history that I know really well. Um, I know it so well that I've gone to some of the museums in Leadville, and I know the history better than the person giving the tour. Nice. And so it's so so some of it's pretty funny because I'm like, yeah, I know this. And so for me, writing the books are really easy because I don't have to do any research. Right. I write them and then the little pieces I will fact check yeah. just to make sure that I'm remembering it correctly. But this is just what I know. You know, it's, it's like if you're a lawyer writing a book about a lawyer. Um, yes. So that's been really fun for me just to get in that mode and just write something I really love and I still have historical that I read for fun like Regencies um, because I super love them and so that's worked out really well for me. Awesome very cool well I'm super excited about your books um, so where does the inspiration come from um, for these books? Does it just come from visiting Leadville or growing up around there or? Um, you know, part of it, I think, is just visiting and having grown up. Um, I actually didn't grow up in Leadville. My husband's family is from there. Oh, nice. When they came to America in the late 1800s, that's where they settled. Awesome. And so that's part of why I know so much about Leadville history, because that's my husband's family history. And... They have a house up in Leadville that we is kind of a family house that we can use whenever we want and go up to Leadville and stay and 
tour and all of that fun stuff. Wow. So it's special to us for that reason. And um, so part of it is that, but part of it is also the characters for me. Um, I'm curious about people <laughs> and I'm curious about their stories. And so uh, I did not plan on this being eight books. I really thought, okay, I'll write three and then um, I'll think of something else. And But what ends up happening is somewhere in the story, one of the characters will say, well, don't you want to know about me? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of them. And what's really funny, because I've written a couple of stories for the bad guys of previous stories. Oh. And part of it is because, you know, the character's like, um, I'm sorry, but you told my story wrong. I'm not really all that. So <laughs> that is, where is it? find it here so that's an unlikely mother uh, my heroine flora she is a bad girl in some of my other books so interesting and um it was just one of those that as i was writing the last couple chapters of the book previous to hers um i just really kind of had this feeling in my gut like no no no. <laughs> and really her just kind of saying, you are writing me wrong. You don't understand me and you don't know me. And that really made me curious. And so I spent a lot of time thinking about her and trying to understand why this woman that everyone hated, why she did that. Uh, because I don't think, and, and this to me is just human nature. We don't set out to be bad people. Right. Oh, the agree. people we know who are bad people, they don't say, hmm, how can I be really evil today? <laughs> they, they've got a need and desires within them that they're trying to fulfill. Right. And some of them go about it in the wrong way. But ultimately, they're people just like you and me. Yeah. That's and really yeah. And so I really have been challenged, especially the past few months. And this is really, um, even my faith challenge over probably the past couple years is just to say, okay, so these are your enemies. How can you love them? Do you even know your enemies? Do you know that this enemy of yours is just a normal human being? Right. And really taking the time to dig deep and love those people who are our enemies. And, um, and so that's really how Flora's story came about was to just say, okay, how do we do that? That's awesome. And, yeah. And I do think that's part of the inspiration for my stories is what typically happens is I think I know what the book is about. I'll get uh, about a quarter of the way through and God will say, Hey, um, are you seeing this? Because this is a lesson I actually want you to learn. I don't really care about the book. What I care about is changing this piece inside your heart. Wow. And so then I have to be like, okay, challenge accepted. And so, um, but it's important to me because I think that is, you know, like I was saying before, earlier, when I didn't want to write Christian books, um, I really, up until that point, I hadn't read a lot of Christian fiction that I felt really changed me. Right. That really impacted me on a personal level. And now I have. I have read a few authors where I'm like, wow, yeah, that really gave me something to think about. And yet to be able to entertain, because... I think we've all read those Christian books where it's like, oh, yay, I'm reading a sermon. This is yeah. awesome. Um, you know me again. Yeah. Yeah. And so hard. I think hard genre. balancing that's really hard. And I didn't appreciate that until I started writing it to realize that um, there's all these different threads you have to weave. Right. And the cool thing is, is I think once I started writing – Love Inspired Historical and working with my editor, um, I can go back and look at those books that I never sold and I can tell you exactly why they didn't sell. That's very really cool. And so that to me is like, okay, I, I've learned a lot over this journey. And to me, that makes it exciting because 
um, I like to learn and grow and um, hopefully do better as I move forward. Yes, absolutely. And I think you're right about Christian fiction. It's so hard because, you know, either it's, it's real preachy or it's not interesting um, or it feels recycled or you're not preachy enough. I actually had one of my ARC readers for my new series, which I wanted to be more of just a clean series. It wasn't going to be so heavy Christian. Mm -hmm. And she was reading it and she responds back to me. She's like, where's the Christianity part? And I was like, well, it's, this one's going to be a little bit lighter. And she was like, uh -huh. more. And I was like, oh my gosh. So there is, there's a balance that you have to. Right, right. Well, and I think part of the balance too is understanding that when we put the label Christian on something that readers have different levels of expectations of what that means. Absolutely. And so you have to be real conscious of that, I think, because the last thing I want to do is uh, put a book out and have someone go, ah, this isn't a Christian book. And I had a conversation in a reader group one time about this where a friend of mine who didn't grow up in the church, and I also did not grow up in the church. And so for us, it's really interesting to come into the conversation as an adult and to hear these conversations around you and be like, what? And so in one of her books, she had put a swear word. Uh-oh. And she grew up with it not being a swear word to her. Right. It was a normal word. And so for whatever reason, it had gotten past her editor and it was left in when it got published. And it was meant in the dictionary sense of the word. Right. So it wasn't even meant as a swear word, but she got some really nasty reader letters about it. And I was just like, so how do we balance that and say, okay, you know, I'm trying to be real here. And I didn't know that was a bad word. And um, fortunately, I knew that was a bad word. <laughs> and I don't use it. <laughs> right. And, but... You know, I do think that there are different levels of what we see based on what church we go to or what community we're part of. And, um, and that's one of the things I also hope that people in my books who read my books, they can see that. They can understand that um, loving Jesus looks different to a lot of different people. And we just do the best we can. And... Hopefully, in the end, God will be like, yay, you did good. Yeah. And not be like, what? <laughs> you got that wrong? Another thing that I dealt with when I was first sending my books out is a lot of the traditional Christian publishers um, didn't like the fact that my character didn't start out as Christian. And so they were doing mm -hmm. unchristian things. And I was like, but it's really important to the conversion. Like, I, that they have to start right. that way because otherwise them coming to Christ doesn't make any sense. And right. Um, right. I struggled with that in the beginning. That's why I ended up just self publishing my first couple of books because I was like, mm -hmm. this is what God told me needs to be said. Um, and I can't, I can't change it or it loses the meaning of it, you know? Right. And that's, that's really hard. Cause I think it's not, Christianity is not all sunshine and rainbows all the time. I mean, just like you said earlier, right. we're still people, we still struggle. And you know, our, our goal is to reach people who aren't believers. And so if we're only mm -hmm. preaching to the people who are already believers, then we're not, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Right. Well, and I think I, at least to me, I think that if we're not portraying Christianity in a way that is going to be attractive yeah. And, and not we have to Beyonce it all up or something like that. But, um, you know, in a way that people will look at our books and say, wow, I want that in my life. Exactly. And I'm willing to give up some of these other bad things happening or that I'm doing that because I see that there's just so much more out there and it's just a much better way to live. Yeah. Um, I think we have to really work on conveying it again, not in a way that again, we're trying to be Beyonce or whatever, but just in a way that we're saying, Hey, you know, there's another way to live our lives and it's a much more satisfying way. 
and it, it has to be relatable. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. If they're, if the characters are so perfect that imperfect people can't relate to them, right? then it's not going to, it's not going to accomplish what we're trying to do. So. Right. Well, and even being encouragement to the believers who are reading the books and thinking, man, if this is what a Christian is supposed to be, I can't do that. Exactly. I believe in Jesus. Yeah. And understand that we make mistakes. Um, I had um, an early reader of one of my indie books read, and she was commenting about one of the characters, and she says, well, she doesn't act very Christian. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you're right. She doesn't. But watch her grow. Exactly. And it was really interesting because as the story progressed, this character started changing and growing and um, and it's it, the comments that I've had from readers now that the book is out is, is wow, I really like how this character changes and grows. So I'm like, yeah. yep, that's the point. And because all of us do some Christian things. Yeah. Even those of us who are Christian. Get in the car with me during rush hour. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my best time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I... I am not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about these indie books because I know that this is love inspired. You have, those are a whole series with a publisher, but you've also mm -hmm. done some self-published books and right. more of contemporary. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, I really kind of, I love writing historicals, but I definitely felt like there was more I wanted to do with my writing. Mm. And so I had said to some friends and said, you know, and they're successful indie authors. And I said, yeah, I am thinking about doing indie thing. And next thing I know, I got invited to do some box sets with them. Nice. And I just had a blast. Um, it was a lot of fun. And so I've become involved in a couple of really fun projects and really enjoying it just because there is a little more freedom to uh, do things that I couldn't do with my publisher. You know, Love Inspired has their guidelines of you can't do this, you can't do this. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I know there are people out there who think, oh, that's so terrible. But I respect that because I know Love Inspired knows their readers and they know what their readers will and won't accept. So I'm really cool with that, but it's also fun to just say, okay, I wonder what would happen if I did this. And having that freedom to explore a little and have some fun um, and, you know, just kind of see where things go. So I've been having a lot of fun because um, for the most part, you know, when I sign on to a project, it's because it sounds like it's going to be fun. Yeah, exactly. So that's really what I've been looking for. I have a bunch of stuff of my own, you know, especially some of those previous books that I know now why they didn't work. Um, taking a look at those and seeing how I can revise them to make them work. I haven't done that yet. Um, I... I was in a car accident earlier this year, and so that kind of derailed some of my plans for the year, and that's okay. Um, it just isn't the right time is kind of how I've looked at it. Right. And so, uh, you know, I've got these other projects that I can work on and do something fun with when the time is right. And in the meantime, the other projects I've already been committed to, again, when somebody says, hey, do you want to do this? I'm like, well, let me see. Is it going to be fun? <laughs> and that's, I, you know, I mean, that that's really, obviously, um, I do like to eat. And right. I want to make sure that I'm making some kind of income. But, uh, you know, I work, I work a full-time job. I have busy kids. They're at that stage where it's go, go, go. So... If I'm going to take on something extra, it's really got to be because it's what I want to do, what I love, and what's going to be fun. And so um, I've got a couple of projects coming this fall that I'm excited about that are kind of a secret, oh. so I can't tell you what they are. Okay. But 
Um, <laughs> but definitely stay tuned. Um, I know I'm going to give you my links and website information at the end, so you have that. Uh, but check out my website, my Facebook, and all when I can reveal my secrets, I will. And can we, I forgot to ask you before, so it's okay if you say no, but can we talk about Kindle World or is that in one of your top? Oh, no, that's not a secret. We can talk about Kindle World. I forgot about that one. Okay. So um, for those of you who don't know, um, and I'm not super familiar with it, but Danica and I are both in a group where we have joined the first contemporary Christian Kindle World. Um, and it's called First Street Church. Am I right on that? Yes. Oh, my link's right in front of me. Okay. Um, now, which launch are you going to be in, Danica? Are you in the July launch? I uh, know. I'm going to be in the November launch. Okay. Um, when, I, when, we, when this originally came up, it literally was right around the time I had my car accident. Ugh. And I was bogged down with deadlines. Um, I had a mild concussion and mild whiplash. And so trying to write and manage my life and the idea of having to add one more project, I was just like, I can't, I can't. So I'm, I'm in November launch and all I know is my book is going to be called Love's Crazy Dream. Nice. I like that. Yeah. And I actually don't know what it's going to be about. I've <laughs> I know. Um, it's going to be crazy, that's for sure. It's going to be crazy. Well, and, and that's the thing. I've, I've come up with a couple of really good ideas that I love, and then I'm like, that isn't crazy. That yeah. That's crazy. So, you know, if you guys have ideas of crazy dreams that someone could be pursuing, please let me know, because I definitely would consider that. Awesome. Well, yeah. I'm also going to be in that launch. Um, so oh, good. I'm super excited. We'll have to do some gonna, fun together. Yeah, we're going to launch at the same time. Um, mine's going to be called Love Breaks Through. And I started it before I even knew this Kindle world existed. Um, and then I had stopped it for a little bit. And so when I found out the Kindle world, I thought, I'm just going to pause this so that I can come back to it and have it be my story. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't have much on it yet. I'm trying to finish a fourth, uh, book of my series and then I'm going to jump into that one, but I'm super excited to see it. Um, and it all goes around this, this one small town in Texas, Sweet Grove. Um, and all of the characters are, are believable and fun characters, at least from what yeah. I've read so far. Um, but we all get to put our own little spin on it, which is what I think is really cool. Right. And I think it's really cool. I actually sent a message to Melissa Storm, who is the creator of the Kindle world, uh, because I just binge read a bunch of the books trying to decide, right. okay, what's, what's love's crazy dream going to be about. And so I wanted to immerse myself in the world to really get a sense of what it's going to be. And what I really love and and this is what I wrote to her about was I just love how in the back of the book, she's just so real about her faith mm. and the books are really real in terms of how they portray people and how they portray their faith and faith growth and that faith journey. Because to be honest, I was really getting burned out on what I'm seeing as contemporary American Christianity. Right. Because I think we put on these masks and we, pretend to be so perfect and wonderful and life is good and life is wonderful. And that's just not the reality for people. Right. And we have real problems and real struggles and God meets us in the middle of those. And so I love how she portrays that. And so that's for me, what has me really excited about joining that Kindle world so, um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot that that's one I can actually talk about. <laughs> Yay! That's so exciting. Yay! I haven't read all of the books, but I have to tell you, if, if she doesn't hook Sally, the librarian, up with someone, then perhaps yeah. Love's Crazy Dream could have something to do with Sally, like winning some competition or getting whisked away or I don't know. She needs a man. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're not allowed to mess with her characters. It oh, right. The main characters. The are. Yeah. So yeah. I have to come up with my own characters and um, we'll see. I kind of have a couple of things that I'm playing with and I just need to figure out how to make them crazy. 
All right. Well, you guys maybe they'll that. literally be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, Anna wants your ideas. So I promise that I will link ways to contact her in the article. Um, so you guys can read it and check it out. We'll also have links to all of her books, um, all six of the seven of the love inspired that are out now. And then how many mm -hmm. self published books do you have? So right now I have two that are out because we just uh, broke apart the box sets we were doing so that we can release them individually. And yeah, now I have to find a cover <laughs> for myself. <laughs> oh, see, this is we, we were talking before about the differences between indie publishing and having a publisher and uh, Danica and I both agreed that we really like not having to design a cover and, and having an editor. Those are the two biggest. Right. Right. Yeah. Because now I'm like, Oh man, now I have to figure out what I want on the cover. Nice. And but, you know, from, from my regular books, I, I just say, okay, this is what I want on the cover. And I give them the details they need me to give them. And I get a cover. Right. And so, they do a great job. Right. And so for my other indie projects, because of the nature of them being part of a group, I have to do something consistent with the group. So I'm like, okay, there's the template. That's what I want the template. Boom. Done. Right. And now I have a couple of books that I, I have them. I just need to get covers and formatting and put them out there and a busy summer so we'll see when I get that out yeah one of these days when my life slows down I actually want to take a class on how to create my own print cover because I think I've mm -hmm. kind of got this e-cover figured out a little bit I can kind of do some oh, it stuff but the print cover is a whole nother deal but what I have found is I really don't like having to wait on someone else because mm -hmm. I, I changed something and I need it to be a little bit wider or I need it to to fit this you know, different publisher. And so then I'm having to sit around and wait for the publisher, right. the, the um, artist to get back to me. And I'm like, I need to be able to just do it, but I don't know how to do it yet. Yeah. So. I found, um, one of my friends has a formatter who does all that. Oh, that's so nice. And so, um, I did hire them to do, um, my indie book that just came out last month. Uh, it's called the thought of romance. And so mm -hmm. I, I did, I was, I'm part of it, honestly, is still recovering from having a concussion. I just don't have the mental capacity to handle it. So I just said, you know, here's my information. Take care of it. What else do you need from me? Right. Do and, something amazing. <laughs> yeah. Because I, and I think that's a good lesson to us all is that I certainly could do it all myself, but the time that it takes and the learning curve that it takes, I would have been making more money doing what I can do well, right. which is writing, as opposed to messing around with all that, it's well worth that money in my opinion. So Absolutely. Absolutely. I just, I want, I, I didn't want to get into the business of making covers or edit, you know, any of that stuff. I just wanted to write books. And so that's what I do. I write books and then and then I, you someone else handle the rest of it. Let yeah, someone else take care of it. Exactly. That's right. Hopefully um, I can make enough money to do that with my house too. You know, like I don't want to clean my house. Me either. <laughs> we are on but the same so team. far, I don't quite have the money to let someone else take care of that. Me either. One of these days I'm going to, I'm going to be able to have someone organize the house and keep it clean once a week. And I'm going to be able to hire a personal chef because I hate cooking too. But Although I had a really great recipe tonight. Um, oh, nice. Yes, I'll share that one of these days. All right, well, yeah, we are yeah. out of time, but I want to say thank you so much for joining us, Danica. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. And for all of you readers out there, um, I will have an article linked above with all of Danica's links so that you can find her and you can stalk her on Facebook or any other social media that she's on. I'm sure she would love to hear from you. Um, yes, absolutely. And if you have ideas for her crazy dream, then you can certainly send that to her as well. Yes. For all of you out there, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you right here next week for another episode of Write the World. Mm -hmm.